Hello everyone, uh, I'm Magda. Uh, I'm now working for Nobody Student Foundation, uh, but my past is Amnesty International. Uh, and uh, starting from the communication, because uh, for me, fundraising and communication is uh, one thing, and I want you uh, also think about fundraising uh, that way. And if you are doing uh, some uh, communication part in your organization, and most of you, I think, do, you are on the very good way to start successful fundraising. Uh, I think uh, communication is uh, especially important for uh, organizations like Oasis. Uh, it's quite easy to be charity uh, which works on uh, you know, children or animals. Yeah, it's uh, easy to show uh, pictures of a small kitten or something like that. But uh, if, uh, if you are a watchdog, you have to explain in the easiest way you can uh, to the all society or to the uh, all your donors and supporters what we are really doing and what is crucial in your work. And nowadays what's changed from 10 years or 7 years uh, when I work in, uh, in fundraising <coughs> is uh, that um, communication change and the work change and now except the Mm -hmm. The part uh, when we show uh, and tell the society about our problems and issues we are working on, we uh, often ask about feedback and about action from uh, our um, donors and supporters. And this is exactly what uh, I mean um, in talking about two-way communication. So uh, we have two person always, two sides of this communication. The sender, it's uh, our NGO, uh, and the receiver, so the donor or supporter. Uh, what is uh, going uh, during the way when <laughs> between the sender and the receiver, it's, it can be everything. Uh, it depends uh, what we are doing, what uh, channels of communication we use and what is going around this, uh, because we are not uh, existing in empty space. Uh, there are a lot of messages uh, in the media, a lot of messages in the internet, uh, a lot of uh, communicates from our friends, family, and uh, it all influenced to our communicate. Uh, so usually our one of our problems is uh, how to uh, be heard, yeah? how to how show and how present the topic and the subject uh, that way it will be enough important to move someone and to get attention uh, and so, as, as you can see uh, the other problem is uh, to be understand as, and uh, as uh, Ika said and uh, present uh, during um, her speech it's one of the main problems of um, watchdogs so that uh, use very complicated scientific language and uh, at the end <laughs> even the sender uh, sometimes forgot what was uh, about. So be, uh, be careful about this. Um, and what about the feedback? A few words about the feedback uh, before, um, before I uh, give you some details and some <coughs> examples. Um, when we are Think about the feedback and the first uh, place we um, we saw some opinions on critics or maybe a evaluation question and I'm not talking about this. Uh, I'm talking about the reaction of the donors. So um, please remember during cons during preparing all the campaigns and during preparing um, also fundraising campaigns to give the possibility of feedback. Uh, because uh, it's uh, 
very often the problem that uh, we are also only communicate, only show the problem, only give uh, some message, only put something on the table and don't give the possibility to react this because there is no tools, no person who responds, uh, no person who, uh, who answers the phone. So it's not the uh, it's not the issue that uh, it's impossible, but we often forget about this. It's simple. If we give donor uh, the support and say the possibility to react, uh, we will be surprised how huge this reaction can be, how massive it can be. And um, I also show one example from Amnesty 2004. <coughs> what was uh, one campaign uh, which was great media success and no feedback, no possibility of feedback. Um, yeah. Uh, communication with, uh, with donors. So when we should start? Um, I don't know exactly um, how many of you prepare, for example, fundraising campaign or fundraise or media campaign or media. I mean, internet also. So not not just the TV or radio. Uh, but uh, there are a few questions we should answer before we start preparation event. It should be the beginning of our preparation uh, just to uh, implement these aspects uh, to the campaign, uh, not to miss it during the way. And uh, it's also very common for, uh, for all uh, organizations that the campaigners prepare campaign, yeah, and they think about the topic, the issue, the channels, the media, um, about celebrities they want to involve, and at the end they just okay, it's fundraising somewhere, yeah. So maybe let's uh, invite uh, the fundraiser or fundraising team also and uh, uh, give also some fundraising aspect to the campaign. <coughs> and I uh, take part in I don't know thousands of this kind of meetings. And I must say that if you are uh, invited just five minutes before the end, <laughs> it's too late, yeah? Uh, because fundraising uh, should be integral part of each campaign, of each communication campaign, even if it's not uh, strictly, strictly fundraising campaign, but communication campaign and uh, talking about the problems, fundraising should take part in this planning uh, process. Mm. The other, uh, the next question is um, what target group we want to achieve? Well, with what kind of people, with what kind, well, <laughs> excuse me, well, which, uh, what group of people we want to communicate with? Uh, Especially for the watchdogs, it's important to answer for this question uh, to yourself <coughs> because the, uh, the issues in the subject sometimes are quite complicated and uh, we can't put it everywhere. Uh, we have to think about the ways of communication and we have to put, uh, think about the messages we want to uh, show. So. It's very important to talk the same language as the receivers uh, uh, to be understand. Uh, and on the end of this um, is the uh, on the at the end of this process is the question: Do donors have the chance to react as we wish? And what does it mean? What we wish? Uh, what the reaction we want? If uh, if it's donation or uh, if it's just like on Facebook, is in signing up to the newsletter to get in contact. So uh, it's also the question uh, where we want to direct them, to our web page, to um, PayPal, to system, to, I don't know, we want to give them leaflet with our bank account <coughs> number. Um, yeah, it's, it's also important to give them direct instruction and only one thing, what we want them to do. Uh, not 10 things, yeah? Please read the article, uh, like, give like on Facebook and also, I don't know, uh, um, follow forward to your friends. Yeah, it will be too complicated. 
uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, strongly connected with this. Do they have the proper tool? Uh, and this is easy. I don't know how many of you try to uh, use, for example, your web pages as an uh, external person, I would say, as a donor. Uh, how? Yeah. To be external person to the website. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, you are on the main web page and you want to make donation. What does it mean? How many pages I have to see before I find the, the, the final page with payment? The question is that if there is donation, if the opportunity at all. Yeah, the yeah. Mm -hmm. Or uh, if we are preparing a campaign, is it the, I don't know, sixth or tenth campaign on our web page hide somewhere deep? Or is it on the front web page? Yeah? Uh, it's very common that we are used to some formats, rules, and uh, we are used to our web pages, our materials, and we don't think about them each time. Of course, it's easier to, you know, copy some solutions, and if it's good solution, tested solution, because uh, when I'm talking good, I mean tested, it's okay. But if we never checked if, if it's working, let's do this now. Yeah. Uh, try to put some group of volunteers uh, to check if our web page is clear enough and if it's easy to use. And uh, let's give them some simple instructions. Please try to find some information on our web page. I promise you will be surprised. <laughs> uh, probably you will be very surprised and I hope it will be the beginning uh, the, of the changes you want to make to to communicate properly with your donors. Because communication and the issue of communication in the organization is strategic, strategic decision. Uh, it's not the, you know, uh, one of the things the organization do. If you decide that you want to, that the people will, should be the part of your organization, if you invite them to be a part of your organization, to participate in your actions, your events, and uh, your campaigns, be prepared that it will be a lot of asking, a lot of <coughs> trouble, but in the uh, good sense, uh, that they challenge you to the new things you have to do to answer their needs. Uh, and. For example, how much time they must to spend on, I don't know, looking for the information, on to react the proper way, the way you want <coughs> during the campaign. It's uh, the basic thing uh, decide, uh, which decide if you are successful or not during your campaign. Uh, yeah, it's the same, how many decisions they have to make and how many ways they could follow during the way. Yeah? If you are giving them 10 opportunities to be active, they probably uh, choose the, uh, the easiest one, yeah? So I think nowadays the Facebook is the easiest one. So if you give a, a button like on your web page, probably a lot of people just push the like button. Uh, but, uh, uh, and if one of the opportunities would be the payment um, box, the everybody or almost 90% choose the like button, not the payment box. That, that's simple, yeah? Um, and all communication with, uh, uh, with uh, donors and society is to about telling stories. And probably you've heard this many times before. Uh, and probably uh, you find it quite uh, difficult uh, in your organization because it's quite specific to, to communicate about the problems and the topics you are working on. Uh, but it's possible. Yeah? And what I can show you and uh, what I want to show you today is that it's possible but it's difficult. And nobody denied that uh, it's difficult. And uh, if we are talking about tell telling stories, there are a few, uh, few simple uh, things and a few uh, simple rules uh, we have to always remember. Uh, make it simple. 
uh, yeah, that's uh, the Amnesty picture from Facebook. Uh, it's not a campaign, it's just a picture. Uh, and the statement is uh, how uh, Syrian uh, asylum seekers uh, problem looks like. I think it's clear enough. You don't have to explain anything. You know. <laughs> Uh, you don't want to be at that place, yeah. And it's moving. It's everybody can imagine what the problem is. Uh, that it's problem with the water or everything, yeah, in that kind of place. So even the complicated issues, in a complicated subject, can be uh, shown in the quite easy way. And we don't have to at the beginning explain all types all, I don't know, details of the problem and all details of our campaigns. We just to want to get attention of the donor. And that's a good example of how to do it. Um, it's also an amnesty campaign. Prepare to get attention. I don't know if Everybody, see, it's not happening here, but it's happening now. Yeah, it's easy. It's shocking. You get attention, and uh, if you see something like this, probably you will stop just for a second. If you have a bus, because it's a bus stop. Uh, but. Uh, Try to think, and to, uh, later we will have exercise when you have more op opportunity and more time for this. Try to think about uh, how to show your organization that way. Uh, if you can, you make it personal. Can you make it simple? Can you show it in one photo, one uh, slide, uh, I don't know, or explain it in 30 seconds? Um, I would say that in our uh, region is still uh, this uh, this opinion and the uh, uh, most common practice that we uh, we want to show the tragedy and the radical campaigns uh, quite drastic and for example US uh, all the way of communication is uh, shift to the uh, communicating about the positive results of working uh, and uh, acting of uh, organizations. So totally different, I don't know, maybe societies and maybe we are a few steps okay. behind them. Uh, this is the example of um, Amnesty International Poland campaign 2004, which I mentioned at the beginning. It was very successful as uh, getting attention media attention and society attention and no fundraising results uh, even one zlot why <laughs> um, just uh, just a few words about campaign uh, it was uh, prepared in very short way i don't think two weeks uh, by uh, by an uh, agency and uh, two uh, biggest um, daily papers take part yeah and and, uh, and they show, they are able to show how the freedom of speech in uh, Belarus look like. Yeah, in very easy way. It makes it uh, very personal because uh, every person uh, who bought a newspaper this day show how it can look like. Because freedom of speech is quite, you know, mystic impression. We don't exactly know what it can be. And that shows what it can be. Uh, and what uh, and it was great success. It was hundreds of calls. Uh, the uh, phone line blocked. Uh, hundreds of thousands of visits on our web page. But we didn't thought at this time about um, what we really want. Yeah, uh, how these people should react if we want. Uh, um, get their attention and uh, contact contact to them and stay uh, in touch with them to I don't know fundraise and communicate later or the, maybe we want I don't know one time donation yeah because we need money and it's huge uh, um, all over the country campaign and it's great possibility to you know uh, mm, get extra money in your budget so after this. 
uh, when uh, we had, uh, and of course the agency had a, a prize and uh, everyone knows what Amnesty International is, maybe not what he's doing, but what Amnesty International is for two weeks, for two next weeks. But uh, it was the um, first time when we thought, okay, something's wrong, yeah? We missed the great opportunity. We should, I don't know, prepare it. We should delay the campaign for the next two weeks and prepare the all communication way and the all fundraising strategy to this. Uh, another can, I, can I ask a question about, uh, so the way you realized that it was a great opportunity was through the feedback you received? Or? You know, we have hundreds of phones, of phones yeah, each day, I know, for, for a whole week. And uh, people ask, uh, yeah, people ask us how we can help. For, for this very yeah, for this specific, uh, yeah, how we can help uh, you, Amnesty International Poland, how we can help, uh, or what we can do for Biaus, and you know, the silence, we, no yeah. we don't know, sorry, <laughs> yeah, so don't repeat it to anyone, <laughs> but <laughs> 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 yeah, learn on our mistakes. <laughs> so, what would you change? What, um, for uh, every next campaign the communication and fundraising uh, strategy, maybe not for ever, but uh, for most of the uh, next campaigns, uh, fundraising and communication strategy was integral part of each campaign, each media campaign. Maybe uh, from the today point of view, uh, we, I can, I don't know, say it was great success because in one moment, uh, all obstacles of uh, campaign team, all the questions if fundraising and campaigning should be, you know, run together, if uh, fundraisers are, <laughs> you know, uh, integral part of our team, uh, have one answer, yes. Yeah. So would you add a link there, like go to this page to make? Yeah, to yeah, or? exactly. Yeah, our front, uh, our uh, web page, yeah, uh, the main web page, uh, for uh, next campaigns, uh, this <coughs> campaigns issue to the address some um, problems, yeah, and topics, uh, where in the same time the, our the topic of our web page, yeah, so, and I show how uh, how we get contacts, how we get data because of this, and how we uh, can follow the contact later. <coughs> so that uh, was uh, freedom of speech, and. Um, uh, Still, make it personal. Yeah, uh, I think it's quite difficult to um, maybe I'm, before I start talking, I try to open <laughs> this. Mm, um, what we see, uh, it's uh, quite difficult to show what uh, what exactly, in the, for example, uh, freedom of speech mean. Yeah, what's the effect and what the problem is when it is um, the right. Is but and uh, this is the example of uh, death penalty uh, issue uh, called Anatomy of Stoning. Also, just the picture and the instruction, uh, <coughs> you know, how to stone the person. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Also quite drastic. Uh, and we use it. One of the Amnesty section. I don't remember which one. Uh, use also this uh, topic for a face to face campaign. Yeah, so raising direct debits uh, from people on the street because it's very difficult to get attention um, on the street and they have a stone. Yeah, and uh, they start conversation to giving the stone to the person and asking, Do you know what it's for? And they start to, they build all the face to face. Uh, campaign on this uh, subject, yeah, uh, yeah, try, yeah, try to feel this, yeah, feel this, uh, what it mean to you to throw this stone to the person, because it's, you know, if you are talking about death penalty, it's quite drastic, uh, it's still that people avoid it, it's one solution and don't really know what does it mean, but if you are start talking about, okay, I show, uh, about, uh, the size of the stone, or I don't know what's the ingredient. 
ingredients of the injection and what's the reaction of the body of the penal uh, injection, the perspective changed a little bit. Uh, um, yeah. Doesn't matter what's next. <laughs> yeah, I think it's enough. Preparation of the content um, adulter and Mm. Yeah, and just to show step by step what uh, how the stoning in Iran looks like really in practice with data with the I don't know uh, I get now that the um, time of the execution uh, is usually about two hours yeah yeah um, just to show you I. You will have for uh, sure this uh, presentation, so yeah, what's going on? That uh, the uh, the person is put to the hole, yeah, and uh, the stoning starts. Who starts the stoning? The doctor, etc. Uh, every detail, yeah, quite shocking, yeah, uh, and. Um, and after this shock, <laughs> after this uh, first uh, first contact and uh, first impression, uh, what uh, amnesty? But I know that not only amnesty, uh, and I think it's very good opportunity for all watchdogs. Uh, they start lobbying, yeah, sign the petition. Uh, I think that after this first communicates, uh, first messages, uh, which are really strong and. Uh, personal and close to the um, receiver, it's quite easy to uh, convince people to sign the petition. It's nothing, yeah? Signing the petition, just, I don't know, two minutes of my time, even not. Um, and because the parent is working so well, um, this is the uh, web page of uh, Polish uh, section of Amnesty, and uh, you can see here a yeah, uh, yellow button, sign the petition. <coughs> it's the campaign uh, built um, on the um, uh, asylum scarce uh, immigrant issues. Uh, and this is the international page. Um, yeah. Uh, the first thing um, which I notice uh, is the address when you don't exist. It's also very catchy and moving. Yeah, it's not Amnesty International slash <coughs> immigrants slash the yeah, when you don't exist. It explains everything in a very short, easy way. And of course you have uh, the typical parts of the web page about us, news, facts, da, 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 but it's not uh, the most important part. Uh, the most important part is the same as in the Polish style. Act now. And what does it mean? Sign the petition. Sign up. Yeah. Uh, and I want to make a little diversion, but uh, uh, in this moment, because uh, when I'm starting thinking even about fundraising, individual fundraising, and now in my um, organization I'm building the fundraising from scratch. Uh, uh, the first thing uh, which I uh, where I start is database, uh, individual database, uh, quite professional. I'm not thinking about Excel, um, which allows us to I don't know target the group, get information about the donation, get information about the activities, uh, and build our donor database because this is our the the biggest potential. Uh, if we have a huge uh, group of supporters, or I'm not even thinking about financial supporters, it uh, don't have to be donors at the beginning, but if we have a huge group uh, of people who like us, yeah, and understand more or less <laughs> our issues, it uh, will be much easier to ask them about the donation. Um, if we are preparing media campaign and address it to the, the anonymous group, yeah, to the old society, um, and we are a watchdog, 
it's quite hard to first get attention, second explain the problem, uh, and of course get the people. If we are talking to um, our uh, our supporters, they know us, they know more or less the issues and the problems and understand this, and they if we are if we are uh, continue our work properly. They usually know the way the, we won't expect them to react. Yeah, so they know our web page, or uh, and, uh, they know uh, how to find some elements of our web page and how to pay. And they are, for example, used to pay for us to to uh, give us the donation to us. So it's much easier and much faster. Um, uh, I also uh, um, it's very crucial to remember that uh, if we are talking about donor database, um, also prepare it properly, so it might be easy to use. Uh, in Amnesty Poland, uh, the web page is linked to the um, database, so all people who sign the petition is automatically in database and you don't have to, you know, put it, I don't know, put 10 volunteers to put data to your database. It goes automatically and, for example, you can uh, thank them also automatically, you know, which can say. Thank you. Uh, unless they use Salesforce. Yeah, and it's for free. Maybe it's very important in the beginning. The software is for free. Um, yeah, and so... Uh, and what, uh, what is the uh, next uh, very important thing? To uh, put this legal statement, I think uh, each country has uh, something uh, a little bit different, uh, which allows you to use data after the signing the petition, yeah? uh, and to communicate with donors. Uh, if you forget to do this, it's illegal. Uh, and you have to do it at the beginning because if you ask them after uh, you know sa uh, signing up, the um, response will be about 10 percent or 15 percent. So you lose 90 percent of people who, you know, uh, can be your donors. Um, yeah. And what what? what yeah. Do you realize that the best pe best time to ask for donation is just after sign up? Yeah. So every time you sign up our petition, you mm -hmm. go to donation page and we thank you for your signature. Maybe you want to donate. But I thought you do that. And when there was this action around, <laughs> around Arctica, <laughs> I was expecting that and I didn't get it. <laughs> because this is an unproposed. This is the only petition when we don't ask for donation uh -huh. because we don't uh, we want to get our activists out of jail. <laughs> and we have yeah. used of raising funds uh -huh. on, uh, yeah, on this issue. You were afraid that we may yeah, change. Yeah. Russian yeah. authorities are uh, very, uh, uh, very uh, yeah. successful yeah. in sending a message that uh, okay. this is all about something else. So, so this is the only okay. exception, but every time you sign up our petition, the first thing we ask you is to donate. And yeah. about 3 to 5 percent of people who sign the petition donate immediately. Yeah. yeah. And the rest you can. Hmm. Do ask, ask they go to the database and we ask them. <laughs> 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 right, one question, apart from the, uh, this uh, strategy of gathering support, mm -hmm. what is the role of the petitions? So what do you do with them? Because, for example, yeah, the, uh, we had what also a debate on <coughs> petitions. The, the idea is that they don't have legal statutes. So if you, if you have an online petition, they don't have any legal value. Yeah, yeah. So, for example, one of your causes, you gather, I don't know, one, 500 signatures, let's say, I don't know, mm -hmm. 10,000. What do you do to them? So you have Just the list and send them to the... Uh, yeah. I, there was something about Greece. What, uh, for example, in that case? We also, uh, we also prepared a petition, uh, email petition, of course, uh, which on the one side go give us information that the person uh, involved in the action and uh, on the other hand go straight to the, I don't know, some government office. Yeah, so they give emails f uh, direct from the person. Uh, and what's next? Show the goal, yeah? Uh, it uh, don't have to be in very precise way. We don't have to show our budgets. We don't have to, I don't know, explain everything but show what we are, uh, what we need uh, this money for. 
And uh, I always uh, heard that uh, it's hard to ask uh, money for salaries. And uh, I think that uh, the biggest part of our budget are salaries, usually. Uh, so, uh, how, how to show them? I just uh, give you a short example and short description of how we did it in Amnesty. Uh, we have one uh, coordinator of educational programs, uh, full time job paid, yeah, and show the impact um, uh, which this. Uh, which uh, one job, uh, one person job can make. So we showed the volunteers in the regions, 15 people in the regions, which educate uh, each of them, educate at least 10 schools. Uh, in each school, it's around 30 people, one class, yeah, to 20 to 30 uh, children. And when uh, we show that I know, thousands of people can be educated and uh, can be, I don't know, informed about. Uh, uh, amnesty work and can have this impact on take part in our actions. This one salary means nothing. Yeah, it's quite cheap uh, to inform thousands of people. You know, for even some, even I don't know, two or three thousand slots per month. Yeah, so uh, we uh, we should <coughs> really explain, not detail as I. <laughs> Uh, mentioned, but we should explain the donors what we need money for. If it's campaign, if it's salary, it's, it's, it's usually the same, yeah? But uh, we usually need it for our <coughs> work and our job, we don't spend it for but our for salaries, how do you even start asking, I mean, in terms of uh, salary raising? We uh, ask money for uh, education, yeah, and show... Uh, and then you show and if the question, uh, because we uh, get questions from our donors, yeah, uh, what uh, what's the parts of campaign, for example? And uh, honestly, it's quite specific because uh, it's a member organization, so our member asked uh, about this. So that was our answer for this question. Yeah. And uh, that's the the, the next uh, part, yeah, step by step communication. And honestly. Uh, uh, the same as uh, Greenpeace, uh, get most of the budget from regular uh, donation from individuals. Uh, for Amnesty for Amnesty, it's about 60 to 70 percent of uh, their budget. Uh, and uh, I, from Amnesty, I have this experience that you have, you can do it uh, two ways. Yeah, mm, ask uh, for the regular support just at the beginning. Yeah, so face to face, door to door program or uh, develop the relation for the some time and ask after some time. Uh, so it's uh, usually um, uh, it's typical uh, action for the supporters, I don't know, online supporters, one-time donation uh, people, or I don't know, uh, this one who just sign up the petition. Yeah? Uh, and of course, uh, uh, asking at the beginning is more effective, definitely. But uh, still, part of uh, sub Amnesty supporters uh, come from this step-by-step uh, -step communication. So, uh, uh, so newsletters, uh, magazines, I don't know, leaflets, events, uh, letter writing marathons. So the global event of Amnesty uh, are the uh, ways to get them engaged, involved, and after uh, after some time, ask. Okay, it start to be to be <laughs> regular supporter, yeah. Mm, uh, and for these people, you can address more hard topics, more difficult uh, issues, more complicated, or even ask for the salaries. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm, what next? And uh, most common mistakes, uh, which are. Uh, usually uh, appears during the way of uh, communication and uh, can mention most of this so <laughs> as you can notice it's true uh, it's uh, all true and uh, first of uh, this is too complicated language so uh, what uh, and it's typical especially if you have uh, inter uh, the franchise and the who was previously a campaigner, for example, and uh, general. Uh, it's typical for the organization uh, which start fundraising and test the way of communication. Uh, 
so uh, my solution to this is really good and uh, it's my uh, common practice to give the materials uh, if you have this possibility but uh, it's very um, uh, very crucial uh, to give it to some uh, someone um, who can judge it and who give uh, opinion and it's not involved in the process and the best way is to give someone uh, who is not from your organization it's not uh, one of the uh, employees uh, the typical person who probably may be your um, donor and you know meet the organization for the first time you know husband and wives are perfect for this role um, and uh, you get uh, the feedback what they really heard and uh, see in your materials. If uh, they understand uh, what the same what you want to address and talk them about. Uh, lack of clear instructions. So usually we want too many things from our donors. Yeah, we want to. Um, I don't know. Give money. Sign the petition. I don't know. Write a letter or. The joint the event in the same time. Uh, so one thing in one time. That's uh, that's the um, that's the rule. Uh, and we have to decide what's our goal in each campaign, what we really want. And if we decide uh, it's a fundraising campaign on this fundraising appeal, um, we don't ask. Uh, <coughs> we shouldn't ask them about three different kinds of activities. Uh, the exception is if uh, the the exception is when you ask after one action. So send the petition, and after this, of course, you can donate or the other, the yeah, opposite. Too um, <coughs> many information in one time. Uh, one thing is um, uh, which I just mentioned: a lack of free instruction what they sh uh, should do. But uh, also, uh, I mean. Um, more, I know, I would say, uh, more rhetorical uh, subjects or issues in our uh, communication. So we uh, shouldn't try, even try to educate the, uh, the people in one time. We want to get them attention. We want to uh, <coughs> get them involved, but we we want manage to, I don't know, uh, tell a whole story about our organization or act, all activities we are doing in this time. It's too many for, for them. And last, but not the least, <coughs> is integrate of reaction. Uh, I don't know if it's a problem <coughs> in your organization, but uh, in Amnesty it was always a discussion if we, where is the limit? Yeah? What we can show, what we, how simple the communicate can be. Yeah? It was always the uh, argument between, between campaigners and fundraisers, and uh, I think uh, it's never ending story. <laughs> it's uh, no uh, one good rule uh, and one good solution, but uh, we have to decide finally if it's fundraising or if it's. Uh, just communicating because it's first step and we will ask about the money for the I don't know, second or first. So we have to answer um, to this question to, uh, to be effective. Yeah. And uh, maybe at the beginning, at uh, the end, um, just one uh, example from Amnesty uh, Denmark. Uh, how to do it in practice, really, uh, so on the campaign from the beginning till the end. They, uh, I don't know, it was about three years ago, I think they have a group of uh, um, migrants uh, who, uh, who are going to uh, be sent back uh, and they uh, prepared, uh, they say, uh, they call it coffee machine campaign because it was not a regular campaign but just uh, the um, initiative of uh, PR manager and two fundraisers and they meet at the, in, at the coffee machine and uh, ask uh, and discuss about this uh, issue. Uh, they, uh, uh, they sent emails uh, and 
in getting uh, informing uh, the regular supporters, one-time supporters, uh, every person they have in the database about the problem and about the situation and uh, ask them to forward this to their friends and families. So uh, in two days they double their database. After this um, action, uh, they ask them to donate. Uh, to donate a small amount of money uh, to put uh, uh, to put ads in uh, the newspapers uh, to get uh, even more attention of the society into this problem. Yeah? And they put, uh, prepare a simple, uh, simple uh, picture uh, addressing this problem and put it to the, uh, to the newspapers for free. Um, uh, what was uh, unusual and very nice to this person uh, who donates uh, it was they put their names uh, on the ad, yeah? so there was a picture and names of the person who had donated. So you can feel the part of the campaign and you can see your name, last name, if you agree, of course, uh, in the newspaper. And um, after this, uh, uh, they uh, ask uh, all uh, of the people who they don't have contact, uh, I, I mean phone uh, number in the database, to complete it. Uh, everything it was of course automatically to complete the number because they want to inform inform them about the results of the campaign. They want uh, they weren't very successful because part of the people uh, half of them was uh, sent back finally. But anyway, they called all the people uh, and. This one who already uh, was a regular supporter uh, was thanked for taking part and this one who uh, just joined was taking for the extra support, regular support. Uh, I don't remember exactly the numbers but uh, they, um, they prepared, the, I would say, the second, <laughs> second part or third part of this campaign so ask again this one who didn't decide at the first uh, time. And it was uh, quite cheap, yeah, because uh, it's just uh, emails and uh, one one cost was telemarketing campaign, uh, and a lot of new person uh, who support Amnesty, a lot of people engage, and a lot of uh, media coverage. Yeah, so and uh, the example from Denmark. I think <coughs> I think it's. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's the end. Uh, of the presentation, do you have any questions? Okay. Okay. Don't be